Chef Buck here, and today we got another real-time cooking video. I'm going to make a fish, potato, and then some kind of veggie type thing to go with it. But the thing that's going to take the longest is the potato. So I'm going to go ahead and get that going first. Start my burner on. What do I got? Boom, boom, boom. I'm going to put it on medium high. And then I'll reduce that in a little bit because basically I'm going to make like breakfast potatoes. Almost like a home fries. So I got some light olive oil and I'm not going to be too shy with the oil. And I've got a non-stick skillet. No, I don't. This isn't a non-stick skillet. Let me get a non-stick skillet. This is a non-stick skillet. This is a stainless steel stick skillet. Cause I don't care if my potatoes stick to this a little bit. I got plenty of oil in here, but if it gets sticky, that's okay too, because that'll just add to the flavor of the potatoes. But I'm gonna get this heating so that I can get these potatoes cooking. And I'm just gonna do one potato, cause it's just camera girl and I. And the amount of time it's gonna take this potato to cook is gonna depend greatly on the size that I cut the potatoes. So I'm gonna do it not such a huge size, you know, I'm going to do some kind of like dice size cubes, maybe a little bit smaller than that. Let's see what we end up with. Boom, Cooking boom, boom. fast is good. Are you hungry, camera girl? Just a little. Well, we're going to have dinner before too long, you know, hopefully I'll have this all done in 30 or 35 minutes, but it's not going to be a lot. You know, we've kind of been uh, watching our portion control. So I'm not going to be making too huge of a meal. And you don't have to be too militant with the size of these potatoes, but you do want them to be kind of uniform. You know, there can be some slight variation, but I want them to cook evenly. I want them to be all done at the same time. So close is close enough. So I got some nice cubic cubed potatoes here. And, you know, oftentimes, especially for breakfast potatoes, I will peel my potatoes, you know, I'll take the skin off. You know, sometimes that looks good for breakfast, but I'm being lazy today. So I didn't skin it. There's so nutrients in the skin. Yeah. Exactly, although we're going to be frying it, so. There's that. So there's that. Hey, don't we have a bigger skillet than this? Yeah. This is the small one, right? Yeah. Let me get the bigger one. It really oh, is real it, time. It up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause see how much larger the bottom of this skillet is. Cause I want. Cause that's actually, you know, even though it's one potato, it's actually quite a little bit of potato. And so I want to be able to spread them out as much as possible. So yeah, make, more browning. I'm making more dishes than I need to. Oops, where's my special tool? Dun dun dun. You mean a spatula? That's it. So that's it with the real time videos, you know, you have to suffer through all this here. So I'm getting my oil heated up. Boom, boom, boom. And I've got uh, olive oil in here. And I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of coconut oil in this other skillet, you know, so that I've got a couple of different oil flavors. Boom, boom, boom. Going to use about that much oil to cook my fish in. And I'm going to do kind of like a blackened fish. Come on over here, camera girl. Let's see what kind of fish we got. I like buying these frozen fish at the grocery store. This is a frozen snapper fillet. And this is 12 ounces. And there's two fillets in here. And I put one of them out yesterday in the fridge. So that would be ready uh, today for cooking up. In fact, while I've got the fridge open, let me pull some stuff out of here. I might want some lemon. And I might want some green onion. I might want some spinach. We might need some color on the plate. Uh, Camera Girl buys this here, which is fermented beets. Is that what this is? Yeah, it's kind of sour like a slaw. So let me throw this over here. Well, you've also got your zucchini over here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a zucchini. I got a little piece of uh, sausage here. I'm going to add to the potatoes. This is already cooked. 
Let me check my oil. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> it's kind of hot. This is going to be a very avant-garde video. Yeah, I think it's hot. Let me see how hot. hot it is here. Boom, boom, boom. I don't know. It's not quite sizzling. Let me give it a few more moments here. Let's see. I got a piece of sausage here because we've been... What have we been doing? We've been doing kind of like a charcuterie. Yeah. What are those fancy pants plates called with yeah, uh, Chef olives made and whatever? It. Yeah, olives and nuts yeah. and cheeses and So we meat. bought some fancy uh, sausage. And this is already cooked. But you know, it's got a little bit of meaty flavor that I'm going to add in here with the potatoes. Just to fancy it up. And as you can see, my potatoes... Are starting to sizzle in the skillet a little bit so I'll go ahead and throw all of my potato in here boom 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 and get my magic spatula and my wooden spoon and I'll go ahead and get this spread out that's why I wanted to get the bigger skillet so I'll have more of a bottom surface to spread my potatoes out because ideally I'm going to want to get them spread out into one layer but first I'll go ahead and move them around and get them coated with oil as best I can and now I will spread them out so that I've got as much of the potato coating the bottom of the skillet so that I'll get a nice uh, little bit of color before I stir these again and I'm not going to stir them for a little bit I'm going to go slow on the potatoes. Cook them low and slow. So I kind of started this off on medium high to get the skillet going and now I'm going to reduce the heat uh, kind of just down to medium low. Maybe I'll go to slightly more than medium low. And I'm just going to leave these potatoes alone and let them cook themselves up. So no seasoning yet? Uh, not yet. I want to get some color on here first. I'm going to add some onions and whatnot in there. That's good. Just a little bit. But come on over here, camera girl. Let's get this uh, So the meat's okay as it fish. is? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to add that in a little bit. Because the meat's already cooked. So I got this piece of fish. This is just a piece of snapper. And I'm going to kind of blacken this fish up. And you can do this with any kind of uh, fish you like. Boom, boom, boom. But I want to get this out of the fridge now. And have it sitting so it'll come kind of to room temperature a little bit. Because ideally I don't want it to be ice cold when I put it in the fridge. Or when I put it in the skillet. Alrighty. Come on over here, camera girl. Let me, let me go ahead and pat my fish dry. Boom, boom, boom. And I'm going to add a little bit of seasoning uh, to this. So let's get on over here. Follow me over here, camera girl. Let's see what we're going to need. I'm going to use some Italian seasonings here in a little bit. I got my uh, black pepper. I'll use some roasted garlic, my Italian seasoning. Oh, I want to use smoked paprika uh, with these potatoes. Other corner, back corner. Boom, boom, boom. Look at that. You know where it is without even looking. I got some regular paprika. This looks pretty good. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to need my fancy pants salt. Do you know where the fancy pants? Oh, chili powder. We got to get some chili powder. That's a hot chili powder. That's good. The salt is on the table. All righty. Or you've got some right here, but it's a little harder. To oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me grab that there. You uh, do some interesting, exciting uh, camera work over there. Can I eat a piece of the meat? No, 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 no. Oh. I, I just slice off enough that on there that exciting. I want to eat. Yeah, 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 but uh, I need all this here. So let me go ahead and dice this meat up. Just a wee little bit. Boom, boom, boom. And this is already cooked sausage. This is almost like a pepperoni or a summer sausage. And I'm just going to really almost kind of mince this. And then I'm going to throw it in with the potatoes so it'll have a little bit of meatiness in with the potatoes. And I'm also going to add some onion into my potatoes as well. But not a lot, so I'm going to get like the dinkiest onion. 
that I can find amongst my onions and I'm just going to uh, cut this up into some pretty small pieces. Uh, dice it into some dinky cubes. Alrighty, let me find my refuge bag. And I'm getting this all ready here and going on this because like I said, the potatoes is going to have the longest cooking time. So I want to make sure I've got all of my ingredients together so that I'm not waiting on my potatoes. Because whenever you're cooking, you know, you got to be thinking about the timing of the dish so everything will come together. Like my fish, I'm already going to have that out in the season and it's going to be you know closer to room temperature by the time I throw it in the skillet but that's going to be like the last thing I do is cook the fish you know everything else is going to be almost done cooking by the time my fish hit the skillet because you want to be aware of your timing so that you're not spending all day in the kitchen twiddling your thumbs because I'm making a full meal right now and it's not going to be that complicated and, you know, like I said, hopefully it's not going to take me much more than a half hour to do it. But come on over here, camera girl, and let's uh, give my potatoes a, a stir here. And it's sticking to my skillet a little bit. Well, you can always use some vinegar or wine to deglaze. If no, no, no. Point. This is good because I want it to stick a little bit. I'm saying at the end. I don't mind it sticking because I want the flavor. But yeah, yeah, yeah. If I have a problem in my skillet later on and I'm not happy with how things are sticking in there, yeah, I'll just toss some wine or vinegar in there, like you said, and deglaze it. And then I have a nice flavor as well. Boom, boom, boom. But I got my potatoes stirred around a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and throw in a little bit of seasoning and start seasoning the stuff up a little bit. I'm going to get some salt. And a little bit of roasted garlic just to get it going. Let me go ahead and uh, season this up a little bit too. Come here, camera girl. Where's my uh, scissors? Because actually, I only thawed out one piece of fish. And that's all I'm going to do is just cook one piece of fish. Because this is, this is plenty enough for both of us. I think. And I'm going to go ahead and cut it. You know, I could have cooked it and then cut it, you know, and served it between the two of us. But I like to cut it first so that I can season and, you know, get a nice uh, sear on all the fish. Let me go ahead and salt this up here. And I'm going to take the chili powder, the hot chili powder. Throw this on here. Because we're going to blacken this fish. And blackened fish is basically uh, frying fish in a skillet on a kind of a high temperature uh, with a lot of seasoning. Maybe too much seasoning. Did I put the garlic on there? Did I can't what? remember. I can't remember if I put garlic on here. No. But if you can't remember if you put garlic on there, then just put more garlic on there. Because more garlic is always a good idea. The sound of semi-clean hands happening there. And then I'm just going to put some regular paprika on here. Because I'm going to use smoked paprika with the potatoes. And that's a lot of seasoning. So I'm going to let the fish sit with that there. I'm going to start getting my plates ready. Because i got a moment to breathe here. Boom, boom, boom. Go ahead and start heating up this skillet just a wee little bit. I'm going to put this on low heat and just get my oil melted so I'm not waiting on that when I'm ready for that. I'm going to go ahead and throw my meat and onion in here on my potatoes. But I'm not stirring it around. I'm just getting this in the skillet. Boom, boom, boom. And I'm just going to leave this potato and stuff alone and let that cook away. And I've already put a little bit of salt and garlic in there. But I'm going to do a dish dash of the smoked paprika on top. 
A little goes a long way, even yep. with potatoes. And I'll just let it sit. So now I got potatoes, I'm thinking about potatoes, I'm thinking about fish. So I gotta think about our vegetables now. Oh I'm gonna get me a bowl here. Boom, boom, boom. Oops. Have to edit out that loud crash sound. I'm gonna do a zucchini. Zucchini is fantastic because it's great cooked and it's great raw. And we're gonna have it raw tonight. So I'm just gonna throw it together into kind of a cold preparation with some vinegar. And just like I did with the uh, potatoes, I'm gonna cut this up into some smaller pieces, but I want them to be kind of uniform. You know, so that it'll uh, make a pleasant salad-y looking thing. Cause this is gonna be basically kind of a salad. But it's not going to be uh, a salad with greens. Although I'm going to throw some lettuce in here. Some lettuce or some spinach? Some spinach, you're right. We got lettuce to use up too, but spinach is easier. Well, how do these pieces look? Are these big enough? Are they small enough, I should say? But my potatoes are going to be kind of cubed. So I want these a little bit of a different shape. Because I don't want everything on the plate to look the same. Like if I had some uh, longer, if I made my potatoes, you know, into some wedges or something like that, then I might cut my zucchini up into some cubes. So that would look a little different on the plate. But I like to use a lot of rice wine vinegar uh, with this kind of dish. And I'm just going to put too much vinegar on here. So it's almost going to be like they're pickled. And if you wanted to, you could use a little bit of apple cider vinegar, red wine vinegar, anything you wanted. Uh, but I got a lot of tomatoes I got to get rid of. So I'm going to slice up some tomatoes to throw in there. And I think these have already been washed. But giving them another little wash isn't going to hurt. And I don't even know what time we started. I wasn't paying attention. What time does it say on the camera? 17.43. It's been going for 17 minutes? Yeah, son. Oh, my God. My dreams of a half-hour dish are... I guess I was way out of line with that thinking. Slowly dissipating? Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I should have thought 40 minutes instead. But I got zucchini in here. And I got tomato in here. And then just a little bit of um, spinach leaves, I think. Is there anything else you can think of that you'd like in here? No. I think that's You've got green onion now. What is that for? Oh, you know, I thought about putting green onion in there, but... As long as we eat it tonight, green onion in a cold preparation that just sits, the odor gets strong. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we've been in a relationship long enough where we don't have to think about that too much. All righty, so I got some Italian seasoning. Then I'm mixing up in my, my hands right there to release those flavors. I'm going to throw a little bit of salt in here. Boom, boom, boom. Excuse me, camera girl. Let me grab this spinach. And I think that'll be enough. And I'm going to give these a rough tear by hand. And, you know, this kind of thing, any kind of vegetables that you can eat raw you know just tear them up and then throw a lot of Italian seasoning and vinegar on them and it'll make a nice salady kind of pickly thing but use more vinegar than you think you want to use and you'll be surprised at how delicious it is because I've got I still got uh, you know, my little thing of oil and vinegar uh, with the oil and vinegar and garlic that dressing but I've been using that on other dishes, so I don't want to use it with this here. I want this to be nice and bright and tangy. So I'm just using the vinegar and a little bit of salt and a little bit of fresh cracked black pepper. And the Italian seasoning. Yeah. So that's it. We've got the veggie part of our dish prepared. And that's all I had to do. Now, if I wanted to, I could have just, you know, steamed some broccoli or just cooked something up like that. But this is very healthy 
and it's very quick, and I can be doing that while other things are cooking. Now let me go ahead and uh, turn my potatoes here again. Boom, boom, boom. Getting these stirred around and spread out. And I'm going to turn the temperature up boop, another little bit of a notch. But again, I'm not cooking this on too high heat because I don't want the outside to get too dark too fast and then have the inside of my potatoes be raw. So, you know, you want to give yourself about 20 or 25 minutes to cook these potatoes, even potatoes of this size. Alrighty. So let me check on my oil right here. Starting to get my skillet heated up here. I'm going to go ahead and throw this up. Another little bit of a notch. Come on over here, camera girl. I'll go ahead and plate this up. Boom, boom, boom. And the best way to serve this is with your hand. <laughs> is that the best way to eat it, uh -huh. too? I'd say you just want to make sure that you're in a committed relationship with whoever uh, you're serving this for. just want to make sure you have a clean hand. You know? Well, you know, I've already washed them five times since I started doing this video. And I'll do it one more time now. We've got one little piece of spinach that escaped. Oh, I got that there. Boom, boom, boom. I'm going to try this here. Your little uh, bit of beet. Because this is pickled, right? What is this? This yeah. is like sour. This is like a cabbage. So this is kraut. Yeah. It's so this like is a red cabbage, yeah. beets, and carrots. So this is good for us. Why? Because fermented foods are great to help your gut do its thing. Oh, that's right. Gut health. Camera gut girl health. has got us on the gut health. So I'm going to go ahead and spoonful a little bit of kraut. We got to make our, our own plates here. I know, but you know, you. I mean, we make a lot of food. We make a lot of fresh stuff, you know, from scratch. But you know, most of our meals are a combination of uh, things we make from scratch and then things we buy. Because, I mean, cooking is enjoyable, but I mean, it's work too. So you don't want to you don't want to make too much of a job out of making your dinner. I didn't put a lot of oil in here, so that's good. Boom, boom, boom. You just always want to make sure that you spread it out so that you can take advantage of the uh, surface of your skillet to get these things cooking through. But I still, I still think I got a ways to go, even though I cook these pretty small. What are you reaching for? But those potatoes still got a little bit to go, even though they're dinky do. But I think my skillet is almost ready here. And I got this on medium heat. And I've had my fish sitting out here probably for 15 minutes or something. I've already got it seasoned. Boom, boom, boom. And I'm just going to lay this in the skillet. It's not going to take very long uh, for this to cook up. What do you think, camera girl? Can you think of anything else? Or this is going to be plenty. I think it'll be plenty. You might want a little bit of lemon for your fish. But... Oh, yeah. I thought about it. I took the lemon out uh, to uh, have a little bit of bright lemon uh, that I was going to add to the vinegar. But I forgot. But that's not necessary. But we got these green onions that we need to use up. Do you feel like eating a green onion with your dinner? Sure. Or is that too much? 
We'll do that here. So come on over here, camera girl. I don't know. Like, we use green onions a lot. You know, just to chop them up to add uh, color to dishes. Uh, to sprinkle on things almost as a garnish. But one of my favorite things to do is just take a green onion and clean it up and wash it out and then serve it whole on the plate. I mean, do people do that? I used to do it at my grandmother's house. Exactly. My dad always did that. And my mom always served them on a plate in the center of the table. But you never see this here. You never see this when you're out in a restaurant, when you're out to eat anywhere. Nobody just serves a whole green onion on a plate. Part of it, they don't have the same flavor as they used to when you pick them out of the field. Really? Yeah. They have some flavor. I mean, an onion, I mean, like tomatoes, you know, the flavor have been, has been uh, scienced out of tomatoes. But I think um, onions still pretty much taste like onions. I think I'm kind of semi-time in this, right? Because I think my potatoes are pretty close here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn it up a little bit more so I can get a sear on here now. More of a sear because I think, I think they're cooked through at this point. So now I just want to make sure, I just want to time my potatoes and fish to kind of be done at the same time. So if I've got this a little high, let me find my biggest piece of potato that I got here. Potato head! That's a pretty big one. And that's pretty much done. It's not quite, but it's awful close. So these little pieces are definitely going to be done. And I had put a little bit of salt in here before and some other seasonings. And it's uh, definitely seasoned up. It's salty enough for me. But I'm going to go ahead and throw in just a wee little bit more smoked paprika. Where did my smoked go? That's my regular then. Here's my smoked. I love smoked paprika with fried potatoes. And like Camera Girl said, this goes a long way, but, you know, I like it a long way on my potatoes. Now my fish. You know, I'm not doing anything very complicated with my fish. I'm just frying it on both sides, getting a nice little bit of color there and just frying that seasoning into the fish. And you saw how much seasoning I put on there. It was an awful lot. But basically I want to turn these and I want to cook it just three or four minutes each side. You know, depending on the size of your fish, the thickness of your fish. You know, but fish doesn't take long at all. Let's see. Amber Girl wants a slice of lemon to go with our fish, so go ahead and get that. Oop. Boom, boom, boom. Muchas gracias. And now I've kind of semi-failed because uh, I wanted to have everything exactly done at the same time what without having to fool my thumbs at all, but we're having to wait for something to cook here for a few moments. But while this is cooking, let me direct you. Uh, down below, we'll have links to, uh, well, I think we have the uh, potato recipe over on our website. So if you want to go check out the written recipe for breakfast potatoes, sort of like this dish here, and uh, blackened fish. I don't think we do red snapper in the uh, video over on our website. But any kind of fish that you like, you can, you can do the, this kind of cooking technique, but it's fantastic for kind of a white fish, especially a bland fish. If you've got like a mahi-mahi or tilapia or something like that, that's fa fantastic for this kind of preparation. Oh, my potatoes are really starting to stick somewhat. So they're done. Well, just because your potatoes are sticking, doesn't mean they're done. You already tasted them. But these, but the, yeah, they're done because they're done. So these have cooked for a long time. Well, I'm just saying, 
you know, just normally when you're cooking, you can't go, well, my potatoes are stuck on here, so they're done. You're so profound, Chef Buck. Because I could have stuck these potatoes on here a lot quicker than I did. But I, what, what's the time on the camera? 30 minutes, 31 seconds. That's 30 minutes, so I probably started these potatoes, what, five minutes? I'd After say the more video like started, eight to ten. Eight but to okay. ten minutes. So, yeah. so you think these have been cooking for about twenty to twenty-five minutes? Yeah. And they're kind of small. What I did. So let me give one little taste test here for another big skinny piece here. Let's see if I can do it without burning my mouth too much. And it's almost there. But I think my fish are done. So I'm going to turn my skillet off, get my fish here, kind of plate it next to my lemon. Camera girl's got her lemon. Make sure I don't put that back on the burner. So any words of wisdom, camera girl? I'm going to give this another minute. I'd say to glaze to get a, that oh, goodness on the bottom. You want, you want me to get all this off of here? Heck yeah! That's some of the best part. Okay, and you want these potatoes to be a little tangy? Oh, should I do it with wine or should I do it with vinegar? Just a little bit of vinegar. Really? Because I think wine would be good. That's fine. Do huh? it with wine. Okay, let's do that. Come on over here, camera girl, because uh, we've showed these to people before. Hey, did we bring these, or was, was this already no, here? No, they're already there. You've also got that Pinot uh, Noir that we don't really like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me do that, because uh, we've got this wine here that we bought. I, I won't show it, because uh, we weren't crazy thrilled about it. Right. And you just need a smidge, and it cooks out the alcohol. Let's see. But We'll throw a little red wine on here. Deglaze our pan, and now basically we're just going to wait for this wine to cook off. So that'll loosen up a lot of bits off the bottom of our skillet. That was a lot of wine, wino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's all right. I'm going to go ahead and get all the bits and bobbles off of my skillet here. See, and now we completely transformed this dish. You might want to turn down the heat. Huh? Well, I'm actually going to turn this off. So I turned the skillet off because the skillet is hot and this skillet isn't going to get cool anytime soon. And so I don't need this anymore because it's coming right off of here. So now what, what did I start off with? I started off with uh, kind of like home fried breakfast potatoes. Yeah. And now I've turned them into fancy French potatoes. Okay. Alright. Well that was a very good idea, camera girl. You were going to leave the best part in the pan. Well, no, and now this actually has more of a dinnery smell with the wine. Alrighty. I really should have put the fish on the last. It was ready too soon. Since the fish is kind of the star, so I want to make sure that that's on top. Boom, boom, boom. And I'm not going to give us all this potato. You gave us most of the potato. I gave it, I gave it, yeah, but look, we got, we got one more serving here. So we've got a little bit of extra potato if we want, or if we want to save it, we'll have that. But there you have it. What's the time on our camera? 34, 27. Ah, so we were pretty close. What's the best light? Come on over here. Let's oh, find no, find it. You're making me dizzy. Boom, boom, boom. So we have got kind of a blackened fish dinner with some fried potatoes and uh, I don't know what that is, a pickled thingamabobby jig. I haven't even combed my hair. Oh, let me see your hair. Oh, your hair looks so good. Oh, my God. You look like some fancy French model. Shut up. But I'll be sure not to get your modeliness in here. Oh, no, no, no. Look at that. Your hair looks terrific. Huh? You put lemon on before you even taste it? I'm not big. I'm not a big fan of uh, lemon on fish. Bum, bum, bum. Mm -hmm. uh, there's enough seasoning on there. You know, I didn't even taste the fish or anything like that. So, 
Now, I didn't do anything on there but uh, salt and pepper and vinegar. I could have put oil, but I felt like there was enough. I was enough, gonna say, let's see. There was enough oil in the potatoes. So I didn't think that I wanted to oil up everything that was on there. Because mm -hmm. just having some nice, tangy vegetables uh, can be delicioso. Now go but ahead. But it's not. But it's not too tangy. You didn't use balsamic. You used the rice vinegar. Yeah, rice wine vinegar is mm -hmm. uh, pretty mild vinegar, so I use that a lot. But you're right. The fish and the potatoes have plenty of oil. Cause I thought I was gonna miss the oil. Oh no no no! I, I had, it's flavorful. I had plenty of oil in the skillet there, so I didn't want to put any more in the veggies. Mm. Mm. Chef Buck. That's a chef butt bite of fish. Mm. I don't know. There's only three ounces of fish. I didn't say how much you were having all together. I, I mean, said if that I just bite. had one bite, I mean, that wouldn't even be a ginormous bite. Spoken like a true pig. <laughs> mm. Like I said, I'll have links down below if you want to check out. Uh, the uh, written recipe for the fish and for the potato and the veggies, you know, just follow your heart. Uh, but thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for uh, putting up with these long real-time videos. I really like uh, doing the real-time video because it is... It's a different kind of challenge. It's kind of challenging. I sort of feel like I didn't do a great job on this one because I feel like I had a lot of dead air. It's just hard to talk. And then not say something completely stupid the whole time. I haven't had that problem. That's it. <laughs> but, uh, that's it. Here, let me do my Bugs Bunny That's All Folks, but with a green onion. That's all, folks. Is that Bugs Bunny? Sort of. Oh, no, you have to do a bunch of chew, 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 chew. You have to chew a whole bunch of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, all we'll right. see you in the future. Bye-bye.